Hi everyone, my name is Lucas Fontes. I'm an engineer here with the Cosmonic team, working on Wasm Cloud and focused on infrastructure, Golang, a bit of the, the framework story there. Uh, and today I want to talk a bit about the evolution of Golang and Wasm together. And what I'm going to cover here has to do with providers and also components. This is how you create your providers and components using Go and integrating that with Wasm Cloud. So pretty much these two boxes here. The, the story between Wasi and Golang started about a year and a, year and a half ago with the first, the first um, inception of with BindGen. And what this was, it gets your WIT interface, all your types, and generates Go code so you can write your servers, your microservices, and things like that using just vanilla Go. But the challenge with that approach is you always generating C code to go together with your Go code. It was a, a way to get started in, in the ecosystem, but we knew from the beginning it was not sustainable. Around August 23, uh, TinyGo, which is, which is another Go runtime focused on, on smaller environments and embedded systems, it implemented what we call the WASI Preview 1 spec. And the WASI Preview 1 spec was first landing in TinyGo with a fast forward landing in BigGo in September 23. And this was great. This was the first the first time that we were able to get components in Go running inside uh, a WebAssembly runtime. That was nice. But then come, come around February 24, we saw that WASI was evolving. And then we saw the WASI Preview 2 being born. Around that time, we had to get Go, literally, running. Um, with, with WASI P2. And in order to do that, we focused on TinyGo implementation as getting that, getting that inside TinyGo is, is easier than getting that in BigGo. It moves faster, the community is responsive, uh, the developers are awesome. And with that, we got WASI Preview 2, which was a change in the underlying implementation of how those binaries are generated in TinyGo, which Made us made us gave, gave us the opportunity to implement a with bind gen go that got rid of all that C code, which was problematic at the beginning. And in July 24, we were able to release the provider SDK, which allows you to generate your capability providers in Wasm Cloud, and also the with bind gen go, which generates with your with interfaces in Go without any C code. Right after in August 24, about a month later, we had the Kubernetes secret provider also being implemented in Go. This came with the realization that the Go libraries for Kubernetes are pretty much Kubernetes is built on top of Go. So it was a it was a pretty good, pretty good story, pretty good implementation story there. And with this, we had the initial implementation of secrets backends in NAT, using NATs with Rust and the Kubernetes one in Go. This also proves that we can be using any languages here to provide to, to create the providers, components, and, and also the secrets. Now, here in September 24, we want to talk about a component SDK and also about West which is how you test your components in Go. And why do we need an SDK here? The, the initial code gen that I was talking about that generates Go and C code generates, some, generates the, the types, the structs, the functions with, they are very verbose. And this is calling into C APIs and is very low level. And in reality, what we want to do is write Go code that is more idiomatic. You want to write an HTTP server with a handler, 
you want a round tripper, you don't want to be calling inside WASI interfaces all the time. So the component SDK is abstracting the, this communication and giving you standard library constructs that you're familiar with. On the left here, you can see the code that was generated with the initial bind gen. And on the right, we're seeing what is possible once we have the, the, the code gen in Go and also the component SDK. It's essentially a regular uh, web server in Go. And Brooks approves, which is a good thing. Why an SDK? We are doing here is providing abstractions on top of WASI and converting that to the standard library. It's completely optional, and you don't need to use it if you don't want to. But we highly recommend it so you can get started quicker and also use a bit more of the your, your usual tools. For example, we do have WASI logging. But in Go, you're used to writing your logs using S-log. So what we have is an S-log adapter that once you use it, it uses WASI logging underneath. And I want to just show here how these components look like in a mini demo. And we're calling it the Large WASM Collider. And sorry to disappoint everybody, this is not the Large Hadron Collider, but we will also uh, make some packets bump into each other here. On the top right, we have kind of a view of the real Large Hadron Collider. And what is going on there is you have a control room, a control center, injecting a particle into loops. And those particles will be looping in, inside uh, this large ring. So what we have in here using Watson Cloud is five WASM Cloud hosts, where one of them is a control room, and it injects a packet, a particle, inside the system. And this is all using components. Once we inject a particle into the system, it's going to be looping in one of those two arrows, either through a regular path or through a special path. The interesting thing here is there is no actual RPC code telling it go to this IP or go to this port or in code use JSON or gRPC. You are literally programming as if you were interacting with a library, but your calls are being sent to a remote, to, to a remote host. And, and you don't need to do anything for that to happen. You get free instrumentation and observability of your system with that. So I'm gonna swap here quickly. How does this look like? Again, we're injecting packets here and things will be looping. We have two routes, one that is the default, one that is the special. And once we inject packets, we want to know in each one of these points for how long the packet has been going around the system. And in here, we see each one of those packets that are being injected with their defined ID, how long they took to go through each, each one of those hops, how many of those calls are failing, are succeeding, latency, logs, all these things are being given to you by the platform just by writing your basic HTTP server or component. And to take a look at how that actually looks like, this is the entire code for, for the system that, that simulates this large Hadron Collider. We have a BLAST handler here, which is a regular HTTP handler. We receive a request in JSON. We parse the request as if any other regular HTTP request. And we also introduce some chaos in the system. And this, what this means is we want to make the component panic and just simulate a failure there to see how Watson Cloud will react to that failure. Once we do that, we generate a packet ID, and we inject that into the system. And we tell this packet, just go start your, your looping. And we return back a JSON response to the, to the client. The difference you will see here is instead of using main to write your program, you will use init to bind your HTTP handler to 
the WASI HTTP interface. And this is where we are bridging the, those two worlds. And likewise, the probe itself, each one of those points in here, the blue ones, what they need to do is they need to forward packets. They receive and forward packets. How do they look like? Again, they are regular Go functions. And we first see if we have a, a special route. If we, if we do, we take the special route. We then check when uh, the time, the delta, between when the packet was created to the packet received in this probe. And then we call the logger. And you can see here that we're calling a logger here that is S-log, literally. But this is being fulfilled by WASM logging. If this is the last time that we should see this packet, we pretty much just bail right here. Otherwise, we do one of my favorite features of WASM Cloud, which is uh, component linking at runtime. In, in here, what we're doing is, based on the route, we might send this, this next call of the packet looper interface to either host A or host B, depending on the route that was picked. And this is configured using WADAM based on a link name. What we're saying here is, hey, WASM Cloud, next time I call the LWC packet looper interface, I want you to point it to a specific location, which is going to be this target route right here. And then we just send the packet to the next hop. Right after that, we do a bit of checking for the, the random. And if it's kind of where we think the bounds of the, the random number, we panic right there. And again, in the init function, we say, this is the function that is fulfilling the width interface. And calling this, uh, I have this running here in the background, but just to show you how this kind of looks like, and don't want to spend too much time here, we pass, for, we pass here how many times we want the package to loop into the system in the TTL, time to live, how a uh, percentage of chaos to introduce in the system and which path to take. And once we do that, we, re we receive back a message with the packet ID, which route it's going to take, and pretty much the, the things that you provided in, in the request. If we go back here and all the way to the bottom, we should see that 542 is this packet. And I really want to see if I can expand this so we can actually see the 542. There you go. And this is how long the packet took to kind of do the go well, a thousand times around the system. Why is this interesting? Here we can see how much latency WASM Cloud is introducing, the different aspects of failure scenarios, what happens when things uh, break. The information that you see here is coming through open telemetry. And as you saw in the code, there was pretty much no mention of open telemetry in the whole setup. The next thing that I want to talk about here quickly is about WEST and component testing. WEST is a testing framework for WebAssembly components written in Go. And the challenging testing components is that your laptop, your Mac, your Windows laptop, it's not an actual WASM runtime. So you're not going to have the WASI logging, WASI HTTP, WASI core interfaces available to you there. So what you need to do is compile your code and then run that inside WASM time. If in writing tests, you want to be able to, to stub interfaces and provide some different messages, some different errors, so you can make sure that you have proper coverage. And the trick here is if you using Go test, if you simply run Go test on top of a component, it will tell you that it doesn't know anything about those interfaces because those interfaces are not in your system. What, when we run this test with West, we, we can mock those calls to WASI logging and pretty much return anything that we want back from those calls. We can check the parameters that you received. We can send a different response. Uh, 
And we can also simply pass through the WASM runtime. What WAST is doing underneath is actually instanti instantiating a WASM runtime, WASM time, which is the one that powers WASM Cloud, and linking your Go code to the component code in, in each one of your tests. And to write this is pretty simple. You don't need anything special other than including the WAST library in your code. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because it's a pretty cool one, and there's a blog post coming up soon. So just to recap here, with BindGen Go is the way to generate with interfaces in Go. And the component SDK bridges the gap here between the complexity of WASI streams, WASI HTTP, and brings that into Go native libraries. If you're writing components targeting WASI Preview 2, Tiny Go 033 and above is what you want to what you want to be using is in terms of the larger uh, Go community, like the big Go, as we call, that support is still coming. And you can follow up on those two PR links that I have here. And this is to say that in Wasm Cloud, you can write providers and components in Go in a very idiomatic way. It's not going to look like you writing C++ in, in Go or anything like that. The, the capability provider is for when you want to run long running processes, you want to have more state. And the component SDK is for when you're writing components, things that are punctual and supposed to be stateless and short lived. And that's all I have here for, for Go. Thank you.